There's a lot of different moves you can learn in climbing, from a simple match to a drop knee to something more complex like a toe hook or a heel hook. As we progress on the grades and we go from V1s to V5s to even V10s, we encounter more of these complex climbing moves. Now today, I'm going to be talking about a move that I've been encountering more and more as I progress onto V5s, the reverse pogo. As the name suggests, the reverse pogo is a variant of the pogo, which if you've never seen before, looks something like this. You might be thinking, why not just jump harder or pull harder? But in certain situations, the reverse pogo or pogo can be easier or more efficient for your climbing style or the beta of the route that you're doing. I wanted to explain how the pogo worked using the idea of torque, but then I started doing some research on it and let's just say it's been a bit too long since I touched the sciences. So I'm just going to try and explain it simply. Swinging one leg from below creates a rotational force that when released at the right time ends up propelling the climber more dynamically and efficiently and can help save energy to get to the next hold. Now if you end up holding the rotation for longer, you will realise that instead of being propelled up on the same side that you started the swing, you will instead be propelled to the opposite side. And that's simply why I call it the reverse pogo. Depending on the positions and type of handholds, certain situations will end up making the reverse pogo the most viable beta to use. Now I'm not sure if this is an actual climbing term or if it's what people actually call it, but it just made sense to me so I'm calling it that. If you have other names or terms that you call this particular move, do let me know in the comments. And a subscribe would be swinging. So what gave me the idea for this video was actually a route that I sent a while ago. Previously, I made a video about what it takes to climb a V5 for the average climber and in that I sent a 3Q. But shortly after that, I came across another route that was a 2Q and after working on it for a few sessions, I actually managed to send it. So I was quite surprised because I thought I had just broken through a threshold and then here I was climbing another even harder route. And yes, you guessed it right, it includes a reverse pogo or at least sort of. So here it is, and I only managed to capture it on a phone, but I'm still quite proud of it because it's the first 2Q that I've sent. Nice. Ale, 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 nice. Ale. Right leg, right leg. Nice. There are different betas to the reverse pogo that I used in this video, but I found that that was what worked for me the best. Even though the reverse pogo was very slight and quite subtle, it was just the right amount of force in the right direction to help me match onto the sloper moving into the big shoulder move. The feeling of swinging in one direction but then going the other when you release is awkward and unintuitive at first, but after practicing over several sessions, I started to realise that this move just made sense. It was being ingrained as a muscle memory in a certain way and I really really like this cool move. Other people used different betas like a high sketchy heel hook while some just jumped straight to it and tanked it with that big shoulder move. But of course, everyone climbs differently. Everyone has different strengths and weaknesses and I found that the reverse pogo, even though it was very slight, was perfect for me. Kudos to the root setters at Boruda because this route was really complex and not too strengthy but had a nice flow and I really really enjoyed it. Another more obvious example of the reverse pogo that I recently caught was during the Boulder World Cup at Salt Lake City 2022 in April. During the semi-finals, Natalia Grossman tops out the second boulder using a very short reverse pogo and it was just beautiful to see. The camera doesn't catch a very good angle but you can see here that Natalia uses a rotational force using the swing of her leg and then crosses over to the other side to match on the last hole gracefully and very beautifully. If you'd like to watch the full video, I have a link in the description of the clip where this happens. Alright, I really enjoyed making this video about a unique move that I found quite cool. 
And if you have any other suggestions on cool climbing moves that you think I should check out or that you would enjoy if I covered or talked about, do let me know down in the comments below. As we progress and climb more, simple moves and climbing techniques are changed together to make complex movements that I really enjoy and that is one of the things I love about climbing. The creativity that goes into setting a route that has a great flow is something that I really enjoy and find absolutely beautiful. It is like an art form and I hope that you enjoy and take a piece of this video away from it too. So keep on climbing and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.